eight rounds at the same venue in this series. Stephen Johnson is on the cusp of doing that. John Bow, his great rival, goes alongside him. Adam Bressington and Jim Richards are next. Mark King and Andy Fisher start on the third row of the grid with Jason Gomisell and Bruce Williams. A pair of Tiranas from row four. Cameron Tilly and Ian Woodward. And that brand new 69 Camaro starting from the fifth row. Been impressed with Ian Woodward this weekend. Tony Karafaloski will join Jim Bolasina on the sixth row. Leo Tobin and the excitement machine. Ellen Balgen and the Mercury Comet starts out of 14. And the final row of Mason and Ben Dunn not making the grid for this race. The Vodafone Porsche safety car will lead this field around as we get set to decide who will win this final race. And it's been a mixed bag, but when you look at that 17 car, he has been the class. And great to see Jimmy Richards in the field, and great to see this crowd still sticking around. They love their painted Dixon Touring Car Masters up here. It's been a staple of this event for 11 seasons now, Matt. Stephen Johnson has won the last three rounds here. He said he's having to work really hard for it as part of the series performance adjustments. Success ballast in a way. You lose revs every time you win a race. So his car would normally rev to 7,500 RPM. It's now at 6,900. So he's lost 600 RPM. That means he needs to maximise the starts and getting out of the slower corners so he can get to the end of that 1.1 kilometre long front straight first and try and fend off the five-time TCM champion, John Bow behind. So off the final turn, the Vodafone Porsche safety car heads to pit lane. It's 10 laps around this 2.87 kilometer circuit. There's Alan Balgen at the back of the circuit there in his position as we get set. Still a lot of dust on the circuit from the Virgin Australia Supercars race. That'll be interesting at the end of lap number one. But as they've done so many times in the past, it's Johnson and Bow. Bresington and Jimmy Richards on the second row as we go green here in the valley. Brilliant start, John Bow launched the time to perfection. The SLR 5000, now the mid-range grunt of the 5.8 litre Mustang will help, but it's Bow into turn one first. Richard struggling to get the Shannon uh, Falcon stopped at turn one. The car was wobbling around, but he got it turned in as is befitting the legend of the sport. Bressington behind Andrew Fisher hanging it wide on the outside. Mark King's in the thick of the action, as is Bruce Williams, who's already got some ground, but it's John Bow who leads for the first time this weekend. So Bow through Clubhouse turn to a number five of this 2.87 kilometre circuit. Johnson on the outside here at six. Will try to switch back. Jimmy Richards has got up to third position. As down the hill into turn seven. The first of ten laps. At Hidden Valley today for the final race. Johnson looking to wrap up his fourth round victory here. And Jimmy Richards running back there in third position. Just having a nice Sunday drive. He makes it look so easy. How cool is the top three? Bow, Johnson, Richards. What an epic leaderboard that is at the moment. The end of lap one. So Stevie J's gone with Bow here. He really wanted that lead into turn one. Because he's concerned he doesn't quite have the straight line performance at the top end to match the five litre chef power at Holden Tirana. And that's a pretty decent example there. So Bow and Johnson one and two, a 19-3 plays a 19-8. Their first flying laps. Forget about lap time. How's this fight? Mark King, enormous break lock up from Bruce Williams on the outside. Struggles to get it stopped. Does. Hangs it wide and King holds on. Well, Williams had to go up the other side of the curb then on the exit. And Gomesel, if you hear how long he stayed out of the throttle in turn number one aboard the big mate Tirana. That's Leo Tobin coming through the field down to turn number five. Cameron Tilly, Ian Woodward, and there's Tony Karafaloski. The engine change overnight on that car. Oh, here we go. This has got all the makings of a classic with these two. One and two, dueling it out for the lead. They finish the way they are, of course. Johnson will still win the round. That will be the big picture option he's looking at. And bearing in mind, after qualifying, they came into the opening race of the weekend locked together on points. They were five apart coming into the weekend. And there is not a good sight for Alan Balgen back in the pits. Cameron Vandendungen on his way down to that part of the pit lane right now. As through comes Bow. Johnson, a big gap now back to Richards, who's got Bresington buying into the argument. Andrew Fisher is next, Mark Ken, Bruce Williams, Jason Gomesall, and behind them is Jim Polisina and Cam Tilly. Replay at the start here, and Bow did what he promised to do. Time to perfection. It's up to the pole sitter to have the advantage, I suppose, on that inside line, but just on the green flag, slight reaction time advantage to John Bow. Got the jump. 
and let the field down into turn one. And Jim Richards had the best view. Bit of a wobble here. See the brakes lock on the rear of that car, but got it stopped and turned in. Pretty exciting opening lap, Cameron, but it's John Bow in front. Unfortunately for El Belgian, same problem as last race. He's got that brake balance issue and the fronts have locked on. What a shame. We're looking forward to seeing this Sunday race antics here today. I vote he sends it for the final lap. Absolutely. He does his donut thing up at turn six anyway. So more replays. This on board with Jason Gomesell. This A9X has got some serious straight line mumbo. Matt Stone Racing built this car and prepares it. It's a really nice bit of kit. And that was all straight line. Just pull out and past Bruce Williams in the AC Delco Tirana. So Gomesell moves up to seventh place for the Queenslander. And he's got Mark King in his sights. So Bow 113.94, the fastest lap of the race on lap number two. It was about three tenths slower that time around. Just Richards just, it's a bit of a margin on Bressington, Fisher and King. Look at Ian Woodward trying to get around the pacer of Cameron Tilly. Heading down into turn number one with Policina in the bottom of that shot. So great battle developing here for 10th and 11th on the track now. Woodward would have made that move if he could, if that makes sense. Uh, but just had the line covered by car 60 in the braking zone. That's where the pacer is so very strong. Lightweight, nimble little race car. Our Belgian back out just drove past our commentary box, so we'll just keep one eye on the back of the field. I'm watching turn six for the remainder of this race out of our window. It's Policina and Tilly head down to turn number six. Here's King and Andrew Fisher. Great to see this car finally finding some reliability in the Jesus number nine Falcon heading down there. And Mark King, who was caught up in that turn one moment yesterday during the Shannon's Thunder in the Valley race. Oh, oh, Woodward just got the right rear into the dirt and lucky to get away because it wouldn't have been the first time he found the dirt on the outside of 10. So there is Bowden. Looks like the locking brake car is fixed on the Ford Mercury Comets. Longer than the USS Enterprise, that car. <laughs> Here's Jim Policina. This is that moment for Woody. Trans Am champ up in Queensland. Just out on that painted white line. And across every category, every driver's been talking about the fact how slippery they are. We normally talk about it in wet conditions, Matt, mm -hmm. but up here, for whatever reason, you just get on that white line, lock a brake down at turn one, or have that moment around the back of the circuit at nine and ten. So about two and a half seconds to Johnson. Richards, who's on his fastest lap of the race target at the moment. This is Tilly with Policina and Woodward. These guys running back 9th, 10th and 11th in the circuit. Karen Pavlosky still in 12th and Tobin. Oh, Tilly just pulling up the valiant pacer. The screaming, the howling pacer around. He'll be really excited about heading to Townsville for the first time where I think this car might be a regular top five runner. Well, you made that point early on in our coverage on Fox Sports of the weekend, and I agree with you completely. I think it will suit the enclosed confines of that street circuit there around Reed Park in Townsville, the first time the series oh, will visit Policina goes. So we're talking about getting on the painted white lines, just dropped off a little bit too wide, and the Mocop Tirana goes around. Right at the final turn, and it was just a couple of inches off the racing line, it's all it needed, got the white line, and Luke the Mocop Tirana is king. And Fisher argue over position, and Fisher runs wide down there, so I guess now we should start talking about the who's your tyres towards the end of the weekend. They're a tough tyre, They've had a workout around this course this weekend. Yeah, and they've got four races to do, and Jim's got that car five, which is great news. So here's a look. A little bit of curb on the inside. In front of Shenanigans Hill. Across there's the curb. Oh, so it wasn't even the white line. It was just unloading the car. Had the slide corrected at once. The rear went around, and the Sydney side, a the experienced racer, was pointing in the wrong direction. Spoke That's to, a car, isn't it? Yeah, cool. Uh, spoke to his team boss, Dean Lilly, who runs that car for him, and they were all a little bit frustrated with how the trophy race went on Saturday here at Hidden Valley. He's in a position to win. Unfortunately, finished eighth, I think, down the field, so they feel like that was one that got away. But Jim's driving pretty well in good form in the VAC Touring Car National Series. Here's Jim. Jim. To another. This is the Falcon Sprint. Stretch the legs down this long straight. You're looking at Adam Bresington behind. Just checking the speed dial, 256 k's an hour, and he's gone too deep, Richards. Adam Bressington sent it. The Camaro, doing 261, went through, and his teammate follows, so Mark King grabs the spot. 
Richards back to fifth place. The White Line Racing Boys are hunting in packs in this one. He's lost both positions there to the White Line team. He'll drop back into the fifth position now. And Jason Gomesol will line him up in that big mate Tirana. Here's the view looking out the back of the Shannon's Falcon Sprint. And just couldn't pull the car up. There was enough of the invitation for the first White Line car to go through. And he's still Captain Cool, isn't he, behind the wheel? No fuss, no drama, just grab second and drive away. Oh, oh no, our Belgian. Right in front of our commentary position too. Smoke pouring from the mighty Comet. Not the kind we wanted to see in this race from the Mercury Comet. John's finished removal's entry. They've already had a pretty tough run with engines this year, Matt. They had a, a rocker fail on that car in Adelaide. Parts didn't arrive in time, so they had to get another engine built for that car. They've tuned it up. It's going miles quicker than it did here 12 months ago. Unfortunately, still some reliability and some durability issues to sort out on car 97. It's a shame, but I'm sure Casso will be back. They'll repair that car on the way to Townsville, if not in Townsville, with their next round. The much anticipated arrival of the Peter Dixon Touring Car Masters on the streets of Reed Park in just three weeks' time. The 10th running of the Watt Pack Townsville 400, which you'll see here on Fox Sports. There's Andrew Fisher under pretty serious pressure from Bruce Williams. This group of cars, Richard has been a bit further up the road most of the weekend, but otherwise, the Pressington, Kim, Gomesell, Fisher, Williams group have all been locked together for most of the four races. Been really exciting stuff. This is a circuit where the various strengths and weaknesses of the cars in Peter Dixon Touring Car Masters were exposed. You've got the cars that are great in a straight line. The ones which have a handling advantage are really good around the back. Rewards good braking, good power down and traction. And that's the forlorn sight of our Belgian parked to the side as the leaders blow by at 260 kilometres an hour. Use of the pits as a vibration that was caused that car to stop, so maybe not as bad as what we first suspected. A hint of smoke then from Adam Bresington's car. The white line transport double act here running third and fourth on the track as John Bowes lead is out for nearly five seconds. As he exits turn number five, Johnson runs in second, but on target to win the round here. With a lap and a half to go. And he'll know that he's very much aware of the situation. It's a busy weekend, Stephen Johnson, because Porsche Wilson Security Carrera Cup properly teed off on Sunday in Hidden Valley. Mm. Uh, so he's been a busy boy locked in the Porsche truck talking to drivers who have been doing silly things. <laughs> so he hasn't had a, much time hanging around the WM Waste team. Error performance on that car this weekend as well. But he's driven it really well, he said. From the moment they unloaded it in first practice, the car was just superb. Really well balanced. No real issues to work on. They've just gone about doing their business. And the result will be that he came into this weekend trailing in the championship and now with a lap to go. 2.8 k's at Hidden Valley. And he'll leave it leading with a nice little margin. It's always a good sign if it rolls out the truck in good condition as now Gomesol stretches the legs of the big mate Tirana. The way get the job done here on Jim Richards down into turn number one. He runs in sixth position oh. and almost into the back of the Falcon Sprint. Carried, but I would want to do that. He would touch Jim Richards with the shot. Oh, he just carried a lot of speed into the corner there. Jesse Domasal, we're really happy to see him having a great weekend. He did get pinged for his role in the dramas in race 10 in the championship yesterday. So they sent him to the back of the grid for the second race earlier on today. But he's bounced back nicely. So John Bauer out in front was all that drag race to turn one. Stephen Johnson has done everything he needed to do, though. A points margin is coming his way. And a record fourth straight round win at Hidden Valley Raceway. It's never been done at any venue at any time in the 11-year history of the Painter Dixon Touring Car Masters. And this guy, no one can touch him when it comes to race wins here at Hidden Valley. That's victory number 15 here at Hidden Valley. No one is closer to this guy. He picks up the win in the final race, but Stephen Johnson will win the round and put himself in the history books. Really nice control performance. There's the run to the end with Richards and Gomesal behind them, Andrew Fisher. And Bruce Williams, that was a great fight all weekend long. Bruce has got a really good points haul in the Pro-Am standings out of this weekend. 
so too Fisher. There's Jim Richards. Hasn't it been good to have this guy back on the racetrack? 302 Ford V8 power aboard that iconic 1964 Ford Falcon Sprint. Still got the old Fairlane badges on the back. It's a cool thing. Yeah, some 50 years on, it still looks cool. As we take a look at your final results of race number four in the Peter Dixon Touring Car Masters. Bow by eight seconds. Bresington home for third. Mark King in fourth, then Richards, Gomesol, Fisher, Williams, Tilly, and Ian Woodward. 20 seconds down the road there after having that slight moment 